I remember Ike one time saying that the road to Budgie 11 will be paved with dead budgies. Or maybe he didn't say that and I'm making it up, though I'm pretty sure I recall him saying something like that in a livestream hackathon. Anyway, this is Ubuntu Budgie 20.4. Why the hell am I looking at yet another Ubuntu flavor on the show? Well, because you guys asked for it back in Season 1, and I think Ubuntu Budgie is unique enough to stand on its own. And plus, the interwebs are still buzzing with news about the latest Ubuntu LTS release, so why not jump on that electricity while it's there, right? Ubuntu Budgie's installer is Ubiquity instead of Calamara's for once. As far as I can tell, it is identical to the regular Ubuntu installer, it even has options to enable ZFS. Next after the install, we see the gorgeous login screen, followed by an equally gorgeous desktop. I'm a real sucker for colors and themes like these. I waited here for a bit expecting the old welcome app to show, but it didn't, so I skipped ahead and started asking my usual DF and free questions and then suddenly, pow, there's the welcome app. No idea what caused the lag, but we'll return to that in just a moment. A fresh install weighed in at 8.4 gigabytes, and we're using about 700 megabytes of memory at idle here. HTOP is reporting 115 tasks and 286 threads. Now looking back at the welcome app makes for a good segue into the desktop, so that's handy. The Ubuntu Budgie welcome app is another one of those hulking welcome apps that can do so much. You can install other browsers here, but I'm a little disappointed that Brave isn't in the list, which, by the way, I'm a Brave publisher, so if you're using Brave right now, it actively supports the channel. More on that later in the video. There's also links to various settings and post-install stuffs, like uh, backups and firewalls. And check out this system information section. Pretty awesome, huh? And now that we've dealt with the updates, we can begin poking around at the desktop a little bit. If you've used Solus before, this probably isn't the budgie setup you're used to seeing. I mean, let's be real here. This is basically Pantheon on elementary OS. Even the launcher and the notifications are practically the same. I mean, it's fine enough. If you could handle the somewhat cluttered and inconsistent design, you'd probably like it better than Pantheon. It's also fully customizable and has a bunch of really cool canned layouts, so that's cool. And not just layouts, but like full-blown themes as well. We'll play more with these during the Encore livestream, which you should totally subscribe and stay tuned for, by the way. And look, yet another welcome app. I have to admit, I think that the Ubuntu Budgie team may have overdone it a little bit with these little helper apps. But as far as the default app selection, it's a pretty standard fare for Ubuntu flavors. There's an app for everything that you might need without a whole lot of duplicates. There's honestly quite a lot here for an install size of only 8.4 gigabytes. In NeoFetch, we see that this is Ubuntu 20.4 LTS as the base OS, as well as kernel version 5.4.0. There are 1,844 packages installed, and four of them are snaps. We got Bash 5.0 with the budgie desktop environment, Mutter is the window manager, and Pokilo is the icon and like overall theme of the desktop. Now it's time for the more hardware-y tests, where each of my devices mounted just fine, starting with the encrypted internal drive, my SD card running ESFAT mounted fine, and the old trusty Benchmarks SSD mounted just fine as well. All of the archive formats opened just fine, which is expected in Ubuntu, as did all of the audio files and the video files, which were fine, but the WebM file opened in uh, Firefox, but big deal. Now we'll look at app images, which both of them open just fine. Etcher and Caden Live, no questions asked. The Flatpak file was recognized by the file browser, but of course, since Ubuntu does not support Flatpaks out of the box, it didn't do much with it. And get this, the software center seemed completely broken. It couldn't find anything. Unfortunately, I get the feeling that this had something to do with the Snap Store because I wasn't able to find anything from the terminal either. It seems to be a search issue, because if I just straight up install OBS Studio, it was fine, but I still couldn't find anything, so, eh. OBS worked perfectly fine, by the way. It detected NVENC and set everything up, recorded and played it back, all fine, it's all good. Networking was a bit of an unfortunate ordeal, because I couldn't find an easy way of enabling Samba sharing, and the built-in DLNA media sharing from GNOME didn't seem to work. My Windows laptop couldn't find it on the network. Connecting with IPs and DNS seemed to work just fine though, so that's good, I guess. Printer support was good too, with my printer being detected and configured out of the box, and my Bluetooth controller connected quickly, with no fuss either. In the way of the Geekbench scores, Ubuntu Vanilla and Ubuntu Budgie got about the same scores for the CPU stuff, but regular old Ubuntu actually did a bit better on the GPU scores. 
For the Dirt benchmark, Ubuntu Budgie actually did a bit better than the baseline with 41 frames a second versus 38. I'd like to point out that I've never played this game prior to these benchmarks and I can finally make it around the track without totaling my rig. I'm proud of myself. Next is War Thunder, which wasn't good. Not only was the frame rate lower than our baseline at 24 frames a second, but the frame rate in game wasn't good unless I was staring at the sky. I got some great footage though. This battle was wild and this PE3 sucks. Good riddance, you bastard. Last up is GTA Fine, which ran okay at about 20 frames a second, which is better than our 18 frames a second baseline. It did stutter a bit though, for like no apparent reason. So you're all probably wondering, is Ubuntu Budgie better than Solus? I mean, sure, you have the power and capabilities of Ubuntu with a Budgie desktop. But what if you don't like Ubuntu or have some other reason not to use it? Well, that's what Solus is for, I guess. Honestly, I'm having a rough time as to why I would recommend using Solus over Ubuntu Budgie. I mean, even without the styling, the compatibility that you get by using the Ubuntu base is unparalleled. Really, I think it comes down to preference. Ubuntu Budgie is a pretty good Ubuntu flavor, especially with the numerous welcome apps and tools. But technically, Solus should get all of the latest and greatest Budgie updates before anyone else, so if that suits your fancy, then go for it. Solus is also fully independent, whereas Ubuntu Budgie is an Ubuntu flavor, so it has to follow what the parent does. So, again, it all comes down to preference. So I mentioned Brave earlier in the video, and I'm going to do it again. I'm a Brave publisher, and basically what that means is that if you're using Brave to watch this video, and you should be, I get a small slice of your attention, and Brave tosses me a penny or two. Obviously it's not much, but after a couple thousand views, those pennies add up, and it doesn't cost you anything. You're already watching this video, so I already have your attention, right? If using Brave isn't really your thing, you can support me over on Patreon too, or you can do nothing and just keep watching, liking, or commenting on my video. That works too. I appreciate all your support. And thanks. And thanks.